we're going to move into a topic that is somehow connected. However, it, we're moving into kind of a new territory. Because we're going to talk now about discrete time. Look, when we were discussing this part, when we were dealing with differential equations, we were trying to find time path of y. Right? So, we wanted to know how does y uh, behaves over time. Okay, let's just say that we found some time path of y, and it's this. Look, the thing is that when we were doing it, we were assuming that the time is continuous. So we can find the value of y at each single point in time. However, you, as you probably know, data on GDP is not created for every point in time. Usually it's quarterly at the most. Sometimes for industrial production it's, uh, it's monthly. But when we have our actual discrete points, and this is where we are moving now. So now we are dealing with variables that are discrete, which means that we do not have a continuous line, we just observe them in some specific periods. Look, generally we will be assuming that there is some period one and this is the value of the variable in period one. That this is some period two and this is the value of the variable in period two. Then we've got period three. They of course are of equal size and then we've got a value of variable three. This is what uh, discrete times generally means. This is what we were doing a little bit in case of uh, dynamic economic analysis. Okay, so what will we have is analysis in periods. What does it mean? Look, we will assume that we're going to start at some time zero and we move on until some time t. So time, our independent variable, is always taking integer values. From zero to some t. Okay, and look, now for each time period, we're going to have values of y. We will be denoting them as y0, y1, y2, so for until so yt minus 1, yt, and then we will have yt plus 1, yt plus 2, and so forth. So, instead of working with a function that was giving us the value for every t, possible value of t. Now we're going to concentrate only on the values of the variable given some integer t. So we are moving in, uh, in periods, from period to period. So there, there is no longer this continuity and as you will see a lot of what we learned during uh, about differential equations still applies here. However, the fact that we have only variables at some specific periods given by integers actually create a wider range of possibilities of what we can get in terms of uh, a complementary function. Okay, so 
we are of course discussing still are going to discuss uh, equations to be solved this time we're, but we are moving from uh, differential to first order difference equations okay let's notice a couple of similarities Look, in case of differential equation we said that this is the type of equation in which we have a derivative dy dt now how will this look in discrete time well we probably will be just calculating difference coefficients however in our case time is always moving from period to period always by one which means the delta t is always equal to y but this implies that dy the delta y delta t is simply delta y over 1 or delta 1 in delta y so look we get that as long as there is going to be either delta in the equation in some form because as you will see here we've got a little bit more of the varieties uh, in which the equation can be written we will have first order differential equation first order differential equation means that we just have one delta one delta written in a different form however just one we will deal with the higher order difference equations in the future okay so look, from this moment on let me define how will we will be operating from this moment on delta y t is defined as y t plus 1 minus y t okay y like that look this is the convention from your book and this is what we're gonna be using however we're also going to be learning some things from econometrics and as you probably already seen in econometrics we usually write it in the following form look actually those expressions are the same look all we did over here is that we moved time subscript back, right? t plus 1 turns into t t uh, turns into t minus 1 so actually there's not much of a difference but just to uh, just to stick to the convention from your book every time when we see delta y t we know that this is the difference between t plus 1 and y t okay so I told you that difference equations can be written in different forms now let's see uh, what does it mean okay so firstly let's say that we've got difference equation differential equation dy dt equals to 2 look what would you say is the counterpart of this differential equation in case of difference equation well that would be dy t equals to 2 so look what is the difference here we have the, the derivative every time when t increases by some very small amount y increases by 2 and here if t moves on by one period y increases by 2 okay and how about this one 
dy dt equals to negative 0.1y. Look, this one we can also easily rewrite as a difference, a difference equation as a dy t equals 0.1y t minus 1. Uh, y, T. Okay, so now let's see how I can write exactly the same expression as you see over here, just different. Look, this is definitely the same as Y, T plus 1 minus Y, T equals to 2. Right? This would be the same as y t plus 1 equals to y t plus 2. Look, what this equation is telling us is that value of y at time t plus 1 is equal to the value in the previous period plus 2. And look, we could do a similar exercise. Uh, 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 we could do a similar exercise over here. How about I can write it as d, th this is y t plus 1 minus y t equals to negative 0 0.1 y t, right? If I move this to the other hand side, I get that this is y t plus 1 minus 0 0.9 y t equals to 0, right? But this, again, I can turn into y t plus 1 equals to 0 0.9 y t. Okay, what can we say about these equations? Well, these equations are linear both. What do we mean that those equations are linear. Well, in both cases, uh, we do not see yt taken to the power of 2, or yt multiplied by yt plus 1, nothing like that. Again, this is linear equation. What degree? This here. Here we just see that we have one difference, right? Two periods. So this is first order difference equation. And the same here, just two periods. So this is also first order. Okay, but there is one thing that distinguishes those two quite much. And what is that? Well, look, here. If I true all these expressions with y, I have a constant. Here, I have a zero. What does it mean? That this means that here we are dealing with homogeneous equation. And here, we are dealing with non-homogeneous. Understand 
better how differential equations work. Okay, so let's start with the case number one that we have here, right? So we've got dyt equals to 2, and let's just say that initial condition y0 is 50. Okay, how do we solve the equation like this? Again, I want to know, I want to have y on one hand side of the equation as the solution, this time yt, and on the other hand, I want to have function of time alone. Okay, so let's think about it. First, we know that we can rewrite it as yt plus 1 minus yt equals to 2. But in this case, maybe better would be yt plus 1 equals to yt plus 2. Okay, so look, this shows us some pattern of change. We know that the value of y in time, at time t plus 1 is equal to value at, in the previous period plus 2. So now let's start from the beginning. So y1 is equal to what? Well, y0, right, plus 2. With y0 being equal to 50. Now, what is y2? y2 is y1 plus 2. But this tells us that y2 is equal to y0 plus 2 plus 2 or y0 plus 2 times 2. Okay, how much is then y3? y3 is y2 plus 2 and for that substituting expression for y2 we get that this is y0 plus 2 times 2 plus 2 or simply y0 plus 3 times 2. Okay, let's go further. y4 is equal to y3 plus 2, which means that it's equal to y0 plus 2, uh, plus 3 times 2 plus 2, or simply y0 plus 4 times 2. And look, when, when we do all these steps, those steps are called iterations, we see that actually here a pattern emerges. Because look, I could also put here 1 times 2, right? And look, what do we see over here? Here we have 1, here we have 2, here we have 3, here we have 4, right? But 2 appears everywhere. Also what appears everywhere is y 0. So, knowing this, I can actually deduce the pattern of y that we've got. So, yt is, in other words, y0, the value to begin with, plus 2, right? That appears everywhere. And look, if t, if we've got y1, we've got 1. If y2, we've got 2. Y3, we've got 3. So, here, we've got just T. Or, after, after utilizing our initial condition Y0 is 15, we've got that YT is 15 plus 2 T. As you see, this was not very complicated, right? Okay, let's go to the case number two of homogeneous equation. Especially that we remember from differential equations that actually, if we know how to solve homogeneous equation, it's enough for us to find the complementary function. And this actually is also true for different equations. So let's see how we can deal with this. So here we got delta y t negative 0.1 y uh, uh, y t okay again we can rewrite it in different
different forms as y t uh, I'm sorry, as y t plus one minus uh, 0.9 y t equals to zero, or y t plus one equals to 0 0.9 y t. Okay, and let's use this last one again to go through consecutive iterations. Y1 must be equal to 0 0.9 times y0. Now, y2 must be equal to 0 0.9 times y1 or 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 y0, right? Because we remember that look, to each consecutive step, this will be going in here, just like uh, just like we had over here. Y1 was replaced here. So we actually, instead of Y1, we're replacing uh, uh, we're replacing the previous, I'm sorry, the next uh, element. Okay, and look, here, yeah, this is 0 0.9 y0, 0, 0 0.9 square y0. Okay, and now let's repeat this step two more times. So we've got y3 is equal to 0 0.9 y2 or 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 to the power of 2 y0 or 0 0.9 to the power of 3 y0. Okay, just one more time. So we are sure that we found the right on the right track. So we've got y4 is equal to 0 0.9 y3 or 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 to the power of 3 y0 or 0 0.9 to the power of 4 y0. And look, this should be enough for us to figure out what is the pattern here again. Okay, so what would be y t? Okay, we see that everywhere we've got y0, so we definitely need to start with y0. What else do we see? Well, 0 0.9 appears everywhere over here. However, look, over here, we had 0 0.9 to the power of 1, then to the power of 2, power of 3, power of 4. So in the formula for yt, we must get 0 0.9 in the power of t. And this is how we iteratively solve the second differential equation. But look, right away, this should points us towards what we will definitely be looking for, which is complementary function. So what happens when a variable y is thrown out of the equilibrium? Okay, let's see. Let's see what is going to happen over here when this is the case. So if we have homogeneous difference equation, of course first order, let's just say in the form m y t plus 1, ma, uh, uh, or this is going to be, yeah, minus m y t equals to 0. Now, how would we solve it? Well, first, we divide both sides by m, so we would get y t minus n over m y t. We would move expression of y t to the other hand side of the equation. Y t 
y at any time t is equal to n over n to the power of t y zero. And look, this form should remind you something. Why? Because look, here we've got a situation when we've got yt that is equal to some a to some b to the power of t. And this actually leads us to the conclusion that if we're going to be looking for the complementary function, we need to use expression like this. However, notice one very important difference between this and differential equations. In case of differential equations, the time path uh, was given in the following way. Right? So look, A's are the same here and here, but the exponential expressions are different. Look here, we always had E. We always get the same number. B over here can be a different number. It doesn't need to be E. It can be 1, 2, 3, but it can be 0 0.5. But what is even more interesting is that B can be negative. B can be equal to exactly 1, or it can be equal to 0. Depending on what is the exact value of B, of course we will have a different uh, uh, complementary function and different dynamic properties of equilibrium. Okay, so this is it when it comes to introductory information about differential equations and uh, iterative method. Since the, in the next video we're going to start solving differential equations using general method that is very very close to what we've learned uh, in case of differential equations. Thank you for your attention and we'll see you in the next video.